to the one just before, you can see in year 2021, if you just have the gas tax and 180 k that is contributed right. to the general, there would be 318. Right, that's what we so have to do. that's the total money that would be allowed for roads without income tax. Correct. Without a, without a dedicated street millage income tax, that's what it would be. So once, that's the slide. Okay. That's the slide. Yeah. So Compare that to the 770. It's yeah, it's double. Double. Correct. Okay. Actually, okay. it triples over time. Over time, right. right. Maybe even, you could okay. even argue that it maybe even quadruples. That's what I needed to see. Correct. Any other questions? Yeah, yes, sir. Um, it's sort of a three-part, but it's sure. all interrelated. My name is Kevin Foley. Um, on the website, city website, uh, there was a slide talking about FAQs that mentioned something about over 400 non-resident entities who could be liable for tax, something of that nature. Outside, we're not residents. I wasn't sure what that meant. It was the second bullet point on the FAQs. Don't even, I'd have to look at that. And then the know. next question is, uh, there was an estimate about the number of people who might neglect paying their taxes. I think like 15% of what we plan plan me to uh, collect that money. And then also, it can be very difficult for uh, an entity to determine who owes and does not owe tax if they're non-residents because the people who pay were transiently or mm -hmm. Yeah. Or their income. I mean, are the estimates that were presented there taking? They took into account about an 85 percent collection rate. Um, that's how, when they did the study, that's how they based it was off those numbers. They figured over time, but there's like 15 percent you're going to miss. That's what they. That's what they believe. Now, I've had conversations with Rick about this. They're they're seeing almost 93, 94, 95 percent collection rates with their methods that they do. Can you explain it a little bit, Rick? Well, just, I mean, we do several things, of course. Um, some of the things that we do, it doesn't affect Lowell right at the beginning, but down the road, we actually um, get the state of Michigan filings, and we take a look at that. Now, this is residents of the city. We take a look at the residents of the city. If you file the state of Michigan return and didn't file your city return, we actually use those dollars from the city return, applying penalty and interest if applicable, and they get a proposed tax assessment at that point. So we do a lot of things like that. We also look for a multitude of things, utility billing, we look for licenses, registrations, things like that. So, um, but there is still the fact that if you've got construction going on, you mentioned road crews coming in, if you've got construction going on in the city, we kind of want to look for that to see what's going on in the city because just like right now, non-residents pay you nothing for use of your city streets and things, nothing at all. So we're trying to get the non-residents that are coming in to collect money from them also to cover. So, I mean, we've got a multitude of different things that we do look at, but, but in a nutshell, that's what we do. <coughs> point of your three point question. I think that comes out of the study and it was based on some statistical data that of how many yeah. employees that you have mm -hmm. in the city, what percentage of them are resident and not resident. Yeah. Can I have one follow up question? Sure. Has there been any polling data done to see, I know that this just was announced recently, what everybody's sentiment about this income tax is. I can see that this could be potentially bad time to bring this up, understanding that the national media is reporting that the average income tax debt for Americans is going to go up $2,000 next year because of the Trump tax plans, and we're looking at a potential huge gas tax and a recession. I mean, is this going to sell right now? Is this really it may, may, no, we haven't done any polling, but I mean, it may or may not. I mean, it, and it's really, it's, it kind of goes back to when the state council looked at their options. I, I hate to use the term, but the term we're at really right now, Governor Engler used to use this term all the time. You need to choose between dismemberment or death. Take your pick. Unfortunately, in this situation, that's kind of where the city council is at with it. Our longest city council member has been on council for four years. City manager, I've been here three years. You've been two and a half. I, we just had a council, we have a very young council who 
basically has been given a problem that no, that is not a very popular position to solve. And we're trying to do it in a way that the least impact possible to our residents. We know a property tax, if we had a dedicated property tax for what we needed to do, we're very con we were very concerned that that was dead in the water. The income tax with the five mil reduction, the council's philosophy was, was it's, it's still bad, but maybe this is what is less costly to, to the resident to try and address these needs. That's, am I, am I thinking, am I, am I thinking out of wrongly, Marty? No, what we did was is we stepped back and took a good, long, hard look at it. At the end of the day, it's been 30 years since we've had any major road improvements in this city. Councils over the years have made attempts, but nobody's ever stood up and said, we need to do it now. I mean, we've got roads deteriorating so bad that, yes. We looked at all the options and came, the conclusion was is, Doing the city income tax and giving a five mil decrease in your property tax took a lot of the sting out of what it's going to cost us all. Having people that work in our community and live outside of our community, you know, they're going to help us get our infrastructure put back. We also looked at the time frame, you know, um, 15 years and then we'll have roads where you know, we'll be able to maintain them and, and do a lot. We can always ask for a, uh, an extension of that, but that's going to be up to the vote of the people. Um, we just figured that was this would just be the the one. I think somewhere we did a thing. It was either going to cost $6 a week per person in the city, your 1%, or if we did a millage increase it was like 42 or 43 dollars significantly higher. a week so it was a huge number and we we know we got to do something so that's that's where that's why we ended up and we're finally taking a good long strong you know look at what do we need to do how are we going to fix it if it doesn't pass we'll go back to the drawing board yep Oh. Uh, I just to bring it back to the points that folks were making earlier about the language and the ballot proposal and the sense that there's a certain degree that we need to sell this. Um, you know, there is like when casual conversations come up about it, there's just a certain amount of questioning and hemming and hawing about is the money really going to go to those? And if people are thinking that changing language from shall to will or intend to to shall or whatever is going to I think it's in interest to really not forget that point. I, I don't dis you know, it, it's a good suggestion, and I don't disagree. Yeah, yeah. I don't disagree. Just, uh, and yeah, with, with that, I mean, if that's something that we got to do, I mean, I think the council would be open to bringing that to the next council meeting. First, is the actual ballot proposal wording available? Yes. The ballot proposal language that you will vote on is on the city website, it's at City Hall. Can that be put onto the next newsletter that comes out with the water bill? It would seem to me as though that might help. I'll see what I can do. I don't think that's yeah. anything against the... And the other, the other point I would make is that Washington Street, um, compared to the street that was a two, uh -huh. um, that's a great street compared <laughs> to Washington Street. That that's was more a like a nice picture of Amity. Yeah. Well, I don't care. It's still. I mean, we, we are. We are. We may not make it up to 2024. I, I argue. I would argue that I'm. You could argue that Washington's the worst street in the city. What about North Jackson? Yeah. Yeah. It's horrible. They're all bad. I live on James Street. James Street's falling apart. It, they're all bad. Where do you start? We have the first streets that are worse yet. Yeah, High Street. High Street. That's terrible. So up there, it's coming apart so bad. Hillside Court. And when it rains, these people living there now are very concerned that the water is just going to come into their homes. Yeah. I mean, yeah. there's a there's a burn there now, but the, the problem is so bad. So where do you start? No matter where you start, you're wrong. Yeah. 
no matter where we start, we're wrong. <laughs> Mike, I have the ballot proposal up there. Yep. Is, are you afraid that you're going to drive businesses out of this town? Because this looks like to me, based on this tax, that I'd be better off building a state of an art, the art plant somewhere else where I didn't have this tax. Because between the tax of my employees and tax of me, you're not going to hurt me. But I share my profit with my employees. So you're hurting them doubly. You know, I mean, they're they're gonna they're gonna pay the burden for this, and and I think it pro I could probably build a plant somewhere else and avoid this tax. Mm -hmm. I've lived here my whole life, but you know, one percent to in manufacturing is everything. We work on the tiniest margins. Mm -hmm. You know, you guys think your budget stuff. You 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 know, I don't know if you guys any of you guys have ever been involved in manufacturing, but we our margin is next to nothing, and you're gonna kill us. Do you have a solution for us? I mean, do you have a I solution? Do, I do. How, how many, how many man police force do we have? I took one look at the budget in about ten seconds. I seen what was wrong with it. How many man police force do we have? Yeah, five full time, and then there's ten bodies that share about a one point uh, eight uh, person full time equivalent. Yeah, that seems like a lot to me for a town this size. I'm just saying, you know, it just looks like we could cut back on the police force. I, you know, I'm sorry. I don't mean to. You know, no offense, you know, because I don't mean to offend you. I'm sure you, you work hard and do a good job, but it just looks like you cut back on the police force, take that money, put it towards the roads, mm -hmm. and get her done. You know, that's what you I know. You, you could do that. Um, you know, we've looked at sheriff contracts. It's about a two hundred thousand dollars savings. Why well, keep these guys in? I keep some police force in place. I would. Well, the problem you have by reducing the coverage is then you would you have basically, a, with the exception that most. Night, night shift you have one guy on, except for the weekends we put a second part-timer on. That's really for officer safety. Any reductions, you're going you're gonna to have time periods of time where you have no police coverage in the city. If that's what the city wants, we'd be happy to look, th look at that, but I'm not sure that's what the city wants. From my understanding is the city wants 24-hour police coverage. And the way it's done now, it's pretty bare bones. I worked in a much larger law enforcement agency. To go working a 12-hour shift by myself with no cover, well, I don't know where my backup is, that's what these guys face as it is right now. I, I have a hard time with that, but if that's what the community wants, so this is we'll look into it. Here to be, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, I was, a, I was a law enforcement before I became a city manager, and I, I just don't think that way. I'm, I, I, and, and I'm no disrespect to you, but I don't think that way. Crime happens everywhere, doesn't it? Right. With the recreational marijuana coming to town, comes to reduce our police force, we really don't have a crystal ball to know what kind of people them are going to be bringing to town. We know that they generate huge amounts of money. <coughs> and they have to sit on it because up until lately, there was no bank would take their money. There's now two banks in Michigan that they can deal with. To reduce our police force is putting a lot of citizens in jeopardy when it comes down to recreational marijuana because of the people that are going to be there and the, the things that could happen. I'm not going to say they can, or they do, but can. And that's why our police force is so very, very important at this time. I mean, I don't, I think if you pull this room, I don't think hardly anybody would be for getting rid of our police department. Well, I don't, I don't want to get that rid of That would be like either. saying, let's close our water department down with just one ward. We have excellent services. I don't think people really understand what, it, what the costs are behind the police department, really. And I have no idea if we're like, compared to Portland, if we're Paying cool. crazy amounts. Steve can explain that probably better than anyone. We, the, there are some general funds that 45 to 50 percent of the general fund covers law enforcement. We're at about 25, 26 percent of the general fund. There, uh, I do a study about every five years. Uh, I'm about ready to do it again, um, and I can put that up. I can put the old one up on the website if you'd like to take a look at it. It's five, I think from 2012 is the last time I did it. But uh, we're right in the middle 
or lower end of general fund dollars for what the police department costs the city. I, I think I broke it down as like $172 a resident is what it costs a year to have this police department, which is not a lot of money if you break it down. Sharon, I, I, I want to say one thing, Mark, because I was on the city council for eight years yeah. when you said we did nothing. No. That's not true. And we said the same thing about the council before us. I mean, the streets have been falling apart, and they were just getting worse and worse. But the difference is we just used the dollars we had. We didn't go to the voters. We didn't raise anything. Um, I mean, there are other things you can do. I don't, I'm not saying it is or is not time, but I'm saying that's the difference rather than try to budget this or that, um, use the LCTV fund. We use that for lots of nice vanity projects around town. That's $150,000 a year that you could say, okay, for the next 15 years, it's going to be used for the city streets. It's not popular. I fought for it, got it done, and got several street projects done, and I had to argue like crazy to get that money. It's not pretty, but it was infrastructure that was sold. It's money that maybe should be used towards the infrastructure. I mean, that would be another 150000 on top of the 300000 that you would have. That's getting it close to five, and yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm just saying. I guess when I said that, I meant more in the lines I of know we're looking at long term. I know. You know, a, a, a solid fix. Right. What you guys did was we you did, you did the best you could do. And our roads, when you were on council, were slightly better than they are now. But yeah, it, it, still, you can't keep up nope, with them. Nope. But how many, um, I mean, the crack and ceiling, I haven't seen any projects in a long time. I mean, we skewed yeah. that, we got on that. Yeah, and I can kind of uh, explain what That's happened there. Um, a little money for a lot I, of I don't disagree with you. We budgeted the last two years, unfortunately. We've had some staffing issues that just hasn't allowed us to get to it. And um, it's something we're going to do. I mean, it's budget. we got to do it. And I, yeah. I know I was on my previous director, assistant city manager, to get that stuff done. And it wasn't that he was lazy. It was just that there were a lot of staffing issues that it just couldn't get done. And then he left. We were planning on doing it this summer. He left. I wasn't going to take that on myself without a, without a new public works director. He's here now, and we, we're going to we're going to that's trust up what we're going to do. We have money budgeted. Matter of fact, we have we have a little bit of reserve from a couple of years that we haven't spent the money, so we could probably do a pretty sound crack ceiling for Brad plan within the next year. That'll that'll take care of the the roads that are not as bad, but just by a little right. Time. But you have roads that are deteriorating that. They got to be addressed, and and you know, you know, we don't. I don't like. I don't like paying more taxes, and I live in the city, and and I, you know, I. But I mean, I I've been in this. I've been in this business long enough, and I know how bad the state treats us, and the state's caused this condition for most cities in the state. That's the problem we have, and, and, and that's, that's what we have to deal with. And the state's not going to help us. They don't give a damn about us. And that's what that's what's going to happen. So it boils down to we either pay some more or we keep living along like we've been right. doing, and really that's what it is. I mean, right. we can yep. fix things, but it's going to take a lot of time. It's going to take a long time. And that's, I mean, mm -hmm. I guess it's up to people's. Right. I mean, we can, you know, like I said, we're going to be able to have about three hundred thousand dollars a year, roughly. It's not going to get us far, but you'll be able to do some things with it. Right. You, know, you might get a half. You know, you might get two blocks a year, but you know, maybe if you're lucky, you get three or four one year. But and that's the best we can do. It's got to be fixed. Um, faster times go than that because you try to sell a house on Washington. I agree. Street right now. Like, if I if I drove down Washington right. Street. I right. bought a house here 10 years ago. If I drove down that street this year and looked at my house, there's no way. <laughs> oh, I agree. Totally agree. The only time Washington is passable is when it's snow and it's all packed down and mm -hmm. it's smooth. Totally agree. <laughs> you say that. I did, I did commend the DPW this winter for making Washington the smoothest I've ever seen. <laughs> that was because they just kept pushing the snow into the holes, right. and it was. It was great. Yeah. 
as we know, we live in our neighborhood, and I live on Washington. We all use Jefferson. We all call that the super highway because that's the easy way out. That's kind of like the piece between my house and the Boy Scout cabin when they milled it and then turned it to dirt, and nobody drove on it. Everybody went through the cemetery road. Um, that's another story behind that. Yeah, it wasn't supposed yeah. to turn out like that. They, they didn't have the surface to work with right. when they got down there that they thought was there. And it's these <laughs> kind of little problems. Yeah. And it's these kind of little problems that you know we're just trying to figure out a good solution. And there really isn't a good solution, but which one stings the less? I think that's what it comes down to. Well, what about, what about riders and like the um, residents of the trailer parks and stuff? Do they pay tax you? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes, I'm sorry. Yeah, I keep I'm missing you. I apologize. <laughs> um, along with the um, resolution where, where they talking about the city <coughs> to use these funds mm -hmm. in this manner. Yeah. I would also like the council to take a look at how the, the city charter provision will be worded afterwards if the if the proposal is approved like like is up there. I have part of it printed out here but it didn't have all the numbers. Um, where it says there that the city is authorized to levy an excise tax on income in accordance with state law to be used for any lawful purpose and to provide for the administration. If, if this money is going to be used for, for streets, can they look at the wording of that and, and somehow get the streets in there so that, um, because otherwise it just sounds like, oh, we can use it for anything we want to. You know, yeah, we're going to say we intend to do the streets, mm -hmm. but but people aren't going to read it that way. Right. They're going to read, okay, the city says they intend to do this, but here they're saying they can do whatever they want with it. So no, we don't like that idea. <laughs> no, I agree with you. Yeah, yeah I, I think here, I think here. that needs to be reworded. And I think you accomplished that in the resolution, where we are restricted in what we can put on the ballot as far as the ballot. Proposal. And that has to be approved by both the governor, governor's office, and the attorney general's office. And so we have to comply with the requirements of the statute. So we had to use this language um, that is up there because we were required to do that. But in the resolution, um, we've already expressed the intent we can take back to the council a more specific resolution that says if it's passed, it shall be used. So can the resolution be made public prior to the vote? Oh, yeah, sure. I'm yeah, sure we put we put our packet, we put it in our council pack. We put all our information we present to council before every council meeting in a council packet that's online. Yeah, and I don't know when the next um, water and sewer buildings go out, but if we're going to put the ballot proposals on there, we can put that resolution out there at the same time. Yeah. 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 That's a good idea. Okay. Yeah, that's that would good, be yeah, my suggestion. Because that's where I got my where I saw the okay. information. Okay. That's a good idea. Tyler, I'm sorry. I know you've been waiting. That, that's fine. So I have three questions, but they can be really easy to answer. So, and uh, I guess one statement is thank you for providing this information. It was really helpful. So a lot of good information out of this. Uh, again, I'm Tyler Kent. I live on fake front. Um, uh, I guess my first question is, you know, we, we talked a little about Act 51 and in that stipulates where money has to go, the money you get, you know, as a city. With the income tax, do we still have to buy by Act 51 stipulation that 1% has to go to non-motorized money, 2% has to go to school, things like that, or is it a reward for us? I think with the Act 51 funds we do. But not the income tax. Yeah, the income tax. No, no, it can be straight streets. Yeah, so that's, yeah. that's basically the yes or no answer. Yeah, that's, yeah. Um, Kind of my second one here is to talk a little about the saw grants. I notice there's a bullet on there about, you know, what's your goal about asset management plan? Quote, um, you know, there may be some adjustments in water and sewer rates. And, um, you know, if, if that's the case, was that incorporated into how possibly we can, you know, leverage that money, you know, if we could rip up a road and put in a new sewer line to use that? In a Brian Belmont can explain that question <laughs> very well. <long. laughs> right, yeah, yes, thank you. 
Absolutely, yep. that's absolutely the case. Under okay. no, most, just a quick explanation of why we do it that way. Yeah. Is most projects, let's say we go after there's state funding that's available, called like a sewer revolving fund, those state loan funding mechanisms. They will allow you typically a methodology that says if I have a sewer and water in a street that I'm replacing, you can, depending on where they are physically, but normally, 50% of the road removal and reconstruction costs can be allocated to the sanitary sewer, and about 30% of the road removal and reconstruction costs can be allocated to the water, yep. which leaves the remaining 20% that has to be borne by some other mechanism, not, the, not those funds. And what is that 20%? What was that 20%? So that 20%. Who's paying for that 20%? So that remaining 20%. The street fund. General fund. Street or general fund. Not the homeowner. Yes. Well, it's, it's in essence, yes. Well, in essence, all of them are the homeowner. I mean, your water funds pay for things, your sewer funds pay for things. It's What we're talking about is what is the funding mechanism. Because ultimately, the truth is, right, we all pay for those things in one way or the other. But it's it's this dictates which fund it can come out. Really what it is. So if that makes sense, that again, when we do a sewer project and water in a street, some of the costs for the street work can be borne yeah, by the separate sewer. separate state funds that we can be used in certain ways. Okay. So all I'm hearing is my water and sewer rates are going to go up. Yes. That's what I. That's what I'm they, hearing. They, correct. They, correct. They to, probably to fix, will. To fix the water. To fix the sewer issues that in, the, in those systems. But what if they could go to a road? Sorry. No. When you when you have a, my understanding is. Fixing it under a road, some of that cost can go to rebuilding that road after you put in new sewer water. Right. And that, that was kind of my question. I'm assuming that was kind of included with the, the cost you guys have looked at. Yeah, we did a underground, remember the trucks running around and sticking cameras, and we did small well, tests, testing. we did lots of neat things. We were presented with a picture of our sanitary lines. We couldn't figure out why we get these huge spikes. The waste water treatment plant, mm -hmm. they leak and they leak bad. And it was what, 500,000 gallons? Yep, a day. A day. And we have those are so deteriorated, they were put down so long ago, and they're just shut. So and, and surprisingly, that the the system isn't worse than we. I thought the system when when we were here. I thought we thought the system was would be far worse. It's about 14% of the network of the, of the sanitary sewer system that this is in. So it's not as bad as we thought it would be. But unfortunately what that means is because it's only 14%, that means less streets can be utilized through those funds to be addressed. So can we get um, copies of the pictures that were taken of the sewer lines that are near our that are near our home? Yeah, we're going to be putting, we're trying to, we're, we're not done with everything yet. So once everything's put together, well, I should probably have informational meetings on that as well. But we're going to be getting that information out as well. But we're not we're not there yet with that. No, just no, yet. And, I, and this is a whole separate matter. Yeah. So we have to put in a whole new sewer line. Yeah. And so I would love to already have that picture from my excavating guy. We might be able to do something with it that. Be from, we don't have it from the road to your house. We have no, but you have it from the, main, the other the main. side of Shepherd to my driveway. No, basically we just went up and down the ladder. Well, we were up in the main line in the yeah. street. Yeah. Yep. Right. Just where the we laterals. We never turned turn and looked this yeah. way. Yeah. It was yeah. Just looking. Mm -hmm. and then one last thing I had, I had to again yes or no, is citizen sponsored ballot initiative last year, pop for potholes, doubly cold. But is that kind of considered in that cost? I'm sure it's not a ton. Here's the problem with marijuana. <laughs> We have no idea how much money we're going to get from it. The way the, the law was passed, it was, it was structured a certain way. And in fact, there's a number of things that have to happen before that money can even be used for roads, counties, cities. And all that. They have to address um, PTSD for soldiers. They have to address all the costs for setting up the marijuana regulatory agency. Um, they have... There's one other component I'm forgetting. Yeah, I can't remember. Yeah, but they have to address those things before they can even divvy up the excise tax amounts for the marijuana. We have no idea. And basically all we know is local cities, there's 35%, I believe, goes to roads, but they don't dictate how that's going to be. So my guess is probably 
Sorry, Tyler, but NDOT's going to take all the money and use for them. And that's what they normally do. But no, no hard feelings. But what they'll probably do, there's 15% of that goes to, to the jurisdiction of that total excise tax. Jurisdictions that have marijuana entities. And that's based on how many facilities in your city you have. So if you only have one facility, you get very little of whatever that is that we don't know. You have seven or eight facilities, you might be, you might get quite a bit. The money is pooled. Yeah, it's pooled. All communities share 15% of the revenue. So low, you get very small amount of that 15%. Right. And I think for the first two years, the first two minutes, I believe it's source yeah. for administration right. set up the state program. Right. And then the other thing with that is, is what you are seeing in a number of communities is you're seeing property values go up. Where this would happen in our city basically is the area that we would allow it would be on Main, west of basically Pleasant and Center, all the way to the city limits and Bowles Road and the industrial areas. It's a small area, but if we see inflated property values, that's going to go to the DDA because those are all in the DDA district, and legally, those funds have to go there. So it doesn't even come to the general fund. And our DDA has is existence till 2033 when these bonds come on come undone. And unfortunately, that's just the way it was crafted. And there's not much we can do about it. But that's another issue. Yes. So this map here is the 12-year plan. If the proposal is passed, if the income tax is mm -hmm. passed, and um, I just <laughs> I gotta get it off my chest. So I, I know everybody thinks their streets are the back of the worst. And several of them have been mentioned, you know, Washington Street, Jackson Street, James Street. I'm sorry, I'm Tammy Griffith and I live on Grindle Drive. I happen to live, I'm one of two or three houses in, in between Division and James Street, about a 400 foot section that did not get finished, according to a map up there, it was about in 2005. Grindle got worked on here up and here out, and 400 feet here did not get finished. Mm -hmm. 14 years we've been waiting for that to get finished, and according to this map, I have to wait another 10 or 11 years on top of that for Grindle Street to get worked on. We never understood why it didn't, we, we heard they ran out of money. They were putting in curbs and gutters, and you go, you go up there and you can see that one oh, yeah. section it's is bad. I, I don't like somebody with you. called Washington Street a war zone. That's what it's like. It's terrible driving down that. Yes. We've already been waiting 14 years for that to get finished. So I can't speak to what took place back in the past, but it is something that when we look at this whole program, again, there's infrastructure that needs to be improved up in this area that fits into that program as well. And again, this is 12 years. There's still three more in there, and we know, I know, that some of these years prior, there's not enough dollars to cover everything, so some of these years might have to be expanded out. But, this just, I know we can get it done in the 15, and, and as far as, as Grindle goes, I, I can't, I don't know what we can do to help with that, but we can take a look at, you know, as far as this program moves along, we have dollars available, how we can uh, go through and, and speed things along or change things along. But at the moment, that's, this is the plan that we came up with. Again, it's all subject to review and change and approval by council yet and, and things of that nature. So, yeah, don't have an answer for you on your 400 feet other than uh, we'll, we take a look at it and see what kind of options are available. Maybe, maybe a quick overlay where we're doing something else. That, that's all part of the overall mix of fixes, if you will. So those would be things that we could look at. Again, there, by, by 2092, you're going to see the streets that were done in the beginning years starting to need some repairs as well, some of the routine maintenance activities. So this is all a, a, a plan that's going to be moving around as far as moving things up and down for major projects 
that's, there's a lot of other things that are dependent on making changes like that. They like said with the Grindel, they ended up in the part of that is a water main up through there for a, a potential new water tower to help with the water situation up in that high pressure area. So those things all, again, part of the puzzle to put in there, and that's why some of these years are what they are. Chris, do we have the maps for the water and the sewer, uh, the 14% that you talked about, so we know where those areas are? Yeah, we're going to be yeah we're going to be getting those things out once the saw. We're not done with everything yet, so I, I'm, I'm a little hesitant to put it out just yet. We've showed it to council. I'm a little hesitant to say this is what it is until probably the end of this year. But yeah, we can well, we plan on doing that. Follow up to that. You've got seven weeks to the election. I would suggest you let people know. Hey, look, these are the areas that we know are going to have to have something done shortly. Here okay. Because of the other funds and the funding that's coming from. Okay. If you want to sell it? I, it just right. seems to be so. Okay. That would be a wise idea. Yes. Is this map? the roles that are 100% going to get fixed, but maybe not in this order. This map is uh, showing the roads that the plant, as of, we see here today, right. would be taken care of in some manner, either either fixed, completely reconstructed, right. uh, taken care of and making sure that they're, they're maintained with routine and preventative maintenance so they don't fall into disrepair and things of that nature. But yes. This plan here is the plan. So you will to not take a road off that map. These are all the roads in the city. We want to get all the roads. <laughs> in the okay, city. but that's not a hundred percent of the roads in the city. Yeah. So well, my question. As far as the, of the roads that we're responsible in our system, for, in our system, yes, it is. Okay, that is a hundred percent of the roads in the city limits of Lowell. No, there are no. some private roads. The city okay, roads yeah. that we're responsible. Okay. Because okay. as you'll notice, Main Street's not on here. That's an MDOT highway. Okay. They maintain that. Hudson Street is maintained by the county. Okay, and so, the but we have an agreement with the county that any, we split the cost with the county for Hudson. That's part of something that was done 30 years okay. ago. Uh, Fun Street is a gravel road. Right. There's no payment right, to right. take care of. But my this question, area here is private. Right. My so. question is you cannot take a road off that to not fix it. It's on the plan to be fixed. Okay. And we stick to the plan and all the, all well, the pieces today stay right. with And all the right. dollars come in as they say, as right. we project. I know that right. things yes. are going to get moved around yeah. and reprioritized, well, but yes. it's not like that 400 feet of grid will oh, never get, okay. That's, that's my question. question. That's, that's my question. question. As long as I'm here, that's, that's crazy. That's I don't, question. why would no. you have just done 400 feet? I don't, yeah. Then we wouldn't have this conversation. Mm -hmm. just think, again, yeah. Things have changed on how roads are taken care of and how people see things. And, and what we're trying to do is take everything we have and have a plan to take care of it. The state's kind of made us do this with our with our asset management plan. So they say they're giving us the saw grant, and now we're going to put a plan together and we have to we have to do something with it. Well, water's always been you have to have a reliability study on it, and now they're making us do something with it. Roads, they expect us to do an asset management plan and submit it to them, and they're going to expect us to do something with it. So this, they're kind of making us do all this, but this is things that, unfortunately, we should have been doing all along. And again, it's not just Lowell. We didn't do it in Fenton either, and we didn't do it in Grand Haven until towards the end I was there. We did do it in Ionia when I didn't was there. Didn't do it in Sterling Heights. It's, it's just a change of times that, because of dollars, because of the way things are funded nowadays and things that are falling apart, we need to take, have a plan. We're, we're trying to do that. Is the sidewalk issue going to come back? Yes. Yeah, we have to revisit that. that be addressed. When I was hired, I was told that that's item number two on your list. I said, okay. So, yeah, so it'll come back. Mm -hmm. How yet? Or what yeah, no idea. Like the, the people that live in the trailer parks and, and renters here in town, do they get to vote? The registered voters, yes. Oh, they, get, they, they get they get a vote in this. Yes. Yeah, the residents. They're registered voters, yes. Okay. Um, back to the one slide for this the road slide. Mm -hmm. The bottom there was an asterisk. That I think it said there was a 4% increase every year in the taxes? Yeah. 
There was a four. That was the projection that was done by Great Lakes Economic Consulting. That's the that's the methodology they use. That is in your annual income. Yeah. That, yeah, an annual increase. That was the projection they use in the Income goes up four percent a year. That's no, if you work. No, no. Well, there's, it's more than that. It's it's new jobs, new employees. So it's coming into law. It's what you what you and I make also, but it's new employment that comes towards that four percent. And then I think that was based on some historical. That was historical data. Yes, that was a historical projection. So that's growth in numbers of residents, not just growth in income of the people who are here. Residents or non-residents that pay correct yeah. growth. The combination of both. I would think it would be just the opposite. I think that I think this tax is going to drive industry out of town, and, mm -hmm. and we did, we'd see exactly the opposite of this. Nobody's going to. Well, I, 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 I don't agree with that because if you look at this, uh, this, the 24 cities in the state of Michigan that have it, that hasn't happened. I haven't. It hasn't happened. It, city of Detroit. I mean, granted, there's issues there, but there's a lot of issues there. But the, the income tax wasn't what drove them out. Um, it's the blight. Correct. I, mean, I hate to say it, but that in Detroit, the blight itself, right. their property tax values are gone down there. They're just gone. I mean, they're knocking so much down. They're, they're trying to come back, but, but the city has so much blight down there that they've spent so much money just knocking the, the houses down so that it looks better and it's more appealing to people. But it's, it's, a, it's a lot of money. But... You know, even in even in Dublin, Ohio, we uh, they're no, they're bigger. You know, they're I think around twenty eight thousand, right? Mm -hmm. Around twenty eight thousand, but they have eleven world headquarters in that town. I mean, they're they're booming. A lot of these places that they have an income tax are are in good shape. So, community, you know, we can we can have we can right now we're managing the decline. That's all we're doing. We can either move forward and make an investment, or we can continue to manage the decline. Trickle down, I'm sorry, trickle down economics isn't gonna work here. It, it, it hasn't worked here now. It's not gonna work. It, we either have to make the investment or we don't. And if we don't, that's fine. But understand, we are managing the decline of this city. If that's what the community wants, okay, that's what we'll do. But we're doing the best we can with what we have. And unfortunately, the situation dictated this, and, and that, that's where we're at. I just feel like my, my employees are going to bear the burden for all these streets that they never drive on. They drive down 21 and Hudson and... They're in and out of here, but yet they're going to bear the burden for this. It's just, it's just completely unfair, you know. Yeah. Can I? I'd like to answer that. Um, we've got 32 city employees. You know how many live in the city? Two. So what's going to happen is there's going to be 30 more taxpayers at a half a percent, which would some of your employees would be. They use the roads. They come here. They go eat lunch. Um, I don't live in the city. I live in a neighboring township. I'm going to be paying towards this road tax, and I don't get to vote on it either. So I wouldn't say we're paying the brunt. You're going to be paying a half a percent. Also, your tax burden is going to go down because the millage is going to go from 15.7 down to 10.7. So you are going to be getting a little bit of a break on that, but yes, there's going to be some income on that. And I hope I explained it as best I can. But and I hate taxes myself. I never vote for them except for last year in my neighboring township. I voted for a road millage, and I actually got my road paved. It was amazing. I couldn't believe it. I was, I was skeptical, but they put a road plan out similar to this, and lo and behold, every road that they had on that road plan last year got paved all the way out to my house. Believe me, I'm not against fixing the roads. <laughs> Neither am I. I'm just, I'm just against this, this income tax. Adamantly. Enough so where I'd build another plant somewhere else I really will. Okay. So, you know, you might want to put together another spreadsheet showing what you're, you know, if have other businesses in town feel the same way, you know, okay. that's how strongly I feel about it. Fair enough. 
Any other questions? Well, I appreciate everyone's time. Thank you for coming out tonight. Um, if you have any questions, we'll be happy to leave our information. You can contact Dan, myself, any one of us at any time. Thank you. And also, we're going to have this information on the website. We're also going to have a video of this on the website on the website as well. Hopefully tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you.